Hi, jewelry makers. So welcome to day one of the advent calendar makes. So uh, if you've had a look in the, in the little drawer with number one on it, you'll see that you actually get some really, really, really beautiful, gorgeous strand of uh, black and white jadeite. Um, and you're gonna get quite a few on there. So you can make several of, the, of this project if you want to, uh, or you can not make earrings and you can do your own uh, variations of it and have it as lovely links. So um, if we look at the actual project that, that you've got, so um, we're going to be making these really, really lovely, well, I, I think they're pretty lovely, uh, wire work earrings. So obviously the thing with earrings is, uh, the way we're going to do it is we want to have two that look um, pretty similar ideally identical but definitely pretty similar so this technique that we're going to learn today it really lends itself to doing things over and over and over again and always having the same look um, so if we start i think with so you can see the, the earrings there uh, we're going to work uh, add it to uh, add it to wire work so if we look at i think first of all so we've looked at the project if we look at um, some of the tools and materials that you're going to need especially if you're going to be making a long so if we think about it, so wires wise, I've got, um, I'm gonna work and, and actually do the actual weave with a 0.6, okay? So I've got a 0.6 wire. You could as well, if you wanted to, um, cause you're gonna need some 0.4, so you could work with uh, 0.4 as well. Uh, you're going to need to make the actual earrings uh, a 0.8. Uh, and then uh, we're, we're going to use some uh, sort of scrap if you've got it or if you've got uh, a one mil. So what I would say is I would almost gather as many wires as you've got and I'm sure if your stash is like mine that's probably a whole room full of, of wires so just take a, a selection of different gauges and you'll see why when I go through the technique of why that's really useful and it will give you different looks. So I've got a selection of wires Actual tools wise, I'm probably only going to work with uh, flush cutters, um, chain nose, round nose. Uh, I, might, I might work with my step bail makers, um, we'll, we'll see. I'm also going to add in, so something that uh, maybe isn't in your toolkit but you should have, and that's going to be uh, some forks as well. And they're going to be really, really useful if you decide to go up um, gauges, but also just to get the pattern into your head. So they're really useful, so we'll come back to those. Uh, what you might find as well, um, some people find it easier to, if they're doing wire work, to work with something because you tend to grip it really hard. Uh, so it can be very useful um, to work with one of those as well. So just like the, uh, the wooden clamp. You don't have to have one of those, but I know some people do. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for tools. Adding in, so obviously if you want to do the earrings, you're gonna need some earring findings of your choice. And I've also got some ball head pins there. But that pretty much is it. And, and obviously what you've got in, your, um, in the advent. So if I move those to the side and then we can actually look at the technique that we're gonna do. So this technique is, is, is it gives you the look of um, a very, very intricate weave. Um, without actually, uh, it, it's sort of like it can be very repetitive which, and, and you're doing it on base wires. So it means that it's just automatically neat. As long as you can sort of like work on your tension, it just looks very, very neat and you get the same thing over and over again and looking neat and uniform, which is what, what you want with your wire work. So if we look at and we talk through the technique that, that we're gonna work with. So usually, if you think, if you look at a lot of wire work, what you would have is you'd have, um, uh, base wires which are structural wires uh, and then you'd have a finer wire over over the top so, so it might look something like if you think about uh, maybe bangles things like that it might look something like this so we've got our base wires in a, uh, a one mil or a 0.8 um, and then over the top of that you've got a finer wire binding them together okay so you can see there so the gold represent is that is our thicker base wires and the silver over the top is a 0.4 and that's usually how you would um, you know you, you do your weaving so we're going to sort of almost do that but then we're going to take it a stage further and we're going to just keep the silver wires so that the, the sort of the intricate part and we're going to lose the base wires but we would have already formed the shape over them but we don't need them we can use them over and over again as long as we're careful with them 
um, but it's that, that silver part that we're going to use. So if we have a think about it, so I'm going to pop that there. There are different ways that you can uh, uh, work with this technique. You will get different looks, so even if it's the same pattern, uh, and you're, but you're working with different wire gauges. So if I show you, so I'm going to move this over and I'm going to bring this one in and we'll see the difference here. So this is the same, same pattern and we're, this is the pattern that we're going to do. But you can see here how different this is going to look if we change our gauges of wire. So it's these, the sections in silver are exactly the same, but by working and changing the weaving wire thickness, so here we've got a 0.6 and a 0.6 and a 0.6, and on this one, a finer, we're working with a 0.4. But it's what the difference that it's going to give you is what your base wires are. So you can see on this one, this top section there, you see that, so still very, very intricate, but a little bit chunkier than the others. So this one, our weaving wires are 0.6, but the base wires that we're working on, these ones here, you can see are a chunky 1.5. Okay, and that's gonna give us something like that. This next one down, so again, it's still like, we've still got that intricacy, still lots of detail in there, it's slightly smaller, and we've, we've sort of gone down to a one point. Uh, 1.25 millimeter, still with a 0.6. This next one down, again, we're still going to work with a 0.6, but this time we've dropped down again to a, a one mil, and you can see how that's starting to, to look there. Then this really, really delicate one here, so exactly the same pattern, and I'll show you the pattern. This is, we drop down here, so we've also dropped down our base wires, we've got a 0.8 but that weaving wire we've also gone so that it's finer as well so a 0.4 and you can see how the difference of that so it's the same techniques but what will change is what your base wire is and what your weaving wire is so have a play about with that and that's where it can really really um you know sort of you don't have to just think about jewelry there you can think about maybe you make christmas decorations if you've got aluminium wire so you're looking at much chunkier gauges but it's a really it's a different metal so it's going to be really really um, malleable and that's a good way of if you if you're like me and you have problems with getting patterns into your head repetition helps but it can also help to just maybe do it on a bigger scale so that's where our uh, forks can come in because if you think about it if we, th if we look at the fork if we're thinking about uh, we're going to remove uh, the base wires. So with, if we take this one, so this was the one, the top one off the, off the list there, we'd got our, we know that this is a 1.5 and we got our 0.6 weaving wire. So if you look here, our base wires here could be one, two, and three. And we've actually got four options on there because the prongs of the fork, we've got four of those. So we're going to treat the, the prongs as our base wires because then we can just slide that off. We've got an open end there in the same way we have here so we can recreate it on the, on the fork. So it's a good way of getting it, uh, you know, getting that pattern into your head. So if I just pop that there. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, have a look on, uh, I'm not going to use a, a copper core wire, I'm going to use the aluminium wire, um, just because it's going to be, uh, you know, it's a lot more malleable. So it's a, it's a heavier gauge, but, it, but it's a lot more malleable to use, so it's going to say, save my hands. So if we think about it, so we'll do a practice and we're going to do a practice on the, uh, we'll do it on the fork, um, we will do it on uh, aluminium, other aluminium wires, and then we'll do it on the actual um, piece. So what we're going to look at, so hopefully that's, that's it, that, that technique is you're wrapping a fine wire around some base wires and then we're going to remove them. So if you have a look here, let's have a look. So if we look at the pattern and it looks like, you know, it's a little bit, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, information there, a lot of lines. But if you think about it, these lines that are going horizontally, those represent, and I'll bring them back in, they are your base wires, okay? So that's what those lines are. Then you've got the lines sort of going vertically. That is the finer wire going up like that. 
So if you look at it, if I move that off, you can see, so this is how we're going to wrap around those base wires. And a lot of it is a straightforward wrap around. So basically starting from the, bringing it from the back, bringing it over the front, wrapping back to the start. There is very, very little sort of crossing over or twisting the wire or anything like that. At only three points do you any, ever do anything different. And we'll go through how you do that. And that doing something different, which is just basically like a wrap around, that is going to give us that, that loop detail. So all you need to think about is you're wrapping a fine wire around structural wires. We're not necessarily twisting it, doing anything like that. And we're gonna follow this pattern. So you can see, it starts off, we're gonna have two wraps around that single base wire. Okay, we'll bring that in here, so you can see. And we'll do that, we'll do that once, twice. Then on our next wrap, we're gonna wrap once around two wires, so those two there. Then we come back down and we're gonna put a space in between there. So then we're gonna have three wraps just once around that single wire. Then we come into this section, so our first sort of a slightly more complicated section. So we've got one wrap around one wire, then we go another one wrap, but this time we're gonna go up to the two wires, so we're repeating this one back to the start. And then we come into this slightly more complicated and we go around all three wires, but we wrap slightly differently around that top wire. Then we come down, and we drop back down, so one wrap around two, we come down and one wrap around one wire. So that is your pattern there if you want to do it in the same way that I've done it for the earrings. And the gauges, if you want to have it, so it's exactly the same, so the size is to, get, to go and frame that six mil. So I used on mine, I used a, a 0 0.6 wrapping uh, weaving wire and then I did it on a, a, a one mil base wire. And that's what will give you, so it's, it's the right size. Okay, so that's the pattern. So we'll have one more look at the pattern. And then we'll start to do each of these sections and we'll do it on the fork so that we can see it. Okay, so if I move that to the side and I'm gonna bring the fork in. So I've got a nice bright blue wire, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. I might actually bring the pattern back so that I'll refer to it so that you can see where we are. So if we think about, uh, we've got, our, we've got the, the fork and they're gonna act as the base wires. So this part of the fork is this bit here. Okay, so I've got my wire, my uh, uh, weaving wire and it's starting at the back, okay? So then my first one is this one here. So I need to just go, I'm gonna go once around and bring back. My next one is this one here. So again, so I'm gonna go once around and come back to the beginning. So this, we've done two of the same there. Our next one, if you look, is gonna go over two. So I'm gonna go up and over two and back down. Always back down to the start. Our next one, if we look, we need one, two, three singles. So I can go one, two, three singles and back to the start. Then I'm gonna go and do one wrap over the two. So something like that. So I'm gonna go make sure that I'm not overlapping, push that in and I now go over and I'm back to the start. So it's this one now that is sort of, it can be a little bit fiddlier, but this is what this loop is. So where the cross is, so you can see, so we're back to the start. So now we go up as if we're wrapping and as if we'd done exactly the same when we've gone over two, but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it and we're gonna come and wrap fully around that third. So I'm coming all the way around, so you can see there, and then back to the start, okay? So we'll do that again in a minute. So I'm gonna go then I'm onto this one now. So we've done that one plenty of times before. That is a single wrap around two. So we're now here. So we now have three single wraps around one. So we know we can do that quite quickly. We can go one, two, three. And we're at this point. And we can go up and over. That's a single wrap. Three singles, so one, two, three. 
We're now on to this next section here, so we get to do another one of those loops. So I'm going to go up one, so one wrap over two, come round. So remember, if let's watch that again, that loop. So I come up as if I've done one wrap over two, and then I bring that back around and wrap like that. And I'm back to the start. And then one wrap around two, and then I can start and space out again. So you can see, hopefully, how that corresponds now with those with that pattern and by doing it on the fork it just means that you know you can still take it on and off but it's it's a lot larger and hopefully if you're anything like me sort of it, it does go in a little bit uh, a little bit easier so that's how you would work it uh, on the fork so if I just bring in now I'll keep that pattern there and we'll start to have a look on the actual pieces now so if I bring this in, I'm going to take one of those away. Okay. So what we're looking to do is, so you're going to have one, one each of almost, if it's going to be like that snowflake or that starburst weave around um, for each earring. So what I'm going to do and the other thing that works very well, if you if you can find them, uh, you can you can find them online. If you you might, um, if you're thinking about the different metals that, that you're working with. So I've I've shown you uh, a, a copper copper core wires or aluminium wires. The whole what we want is we want um, a hard wire that when we're holding it, it's not going to come out of shape. So these stainless steel rods work really, really well for that because this is a one mil, but you can see they're really, really solid. They're not going to come out of shape in the same way, perhaps, um, if we have a look at uh, a copper core. So you can see the difference of, of the bend there. That is, yes, it's springy, but it's getting that curve. So maybe have a look, stainless steel, um, you can get them in different gauges and they're really, really useful. So in the same way, think if you're thinking about that, that fork that you know that, that we had then, and we're going to follow that pattern. And again, I'll bring that, I'll bring that in so it's sort of sitting. Maybe we'll have that something like that. Okay. So we've got our three base wires here. And so for the actual earrings, I want to work with, so I'm going to work with a 0.6. Now I don't have to cut this because it's just, I've got open ends here. So it's not like I have to, um, I can just keep this on the reel. So remember we start off, our starting point is, we start with that, that wire sort of sitting behind all of the wires, the base wires. Okay, so I'm gonna start and wrap. So I'm wrapping around, so once, and twice and I come back down. So this is more where your tension will come into it. Uh, and if you don't have the stainless steel wires, this might be where you decide to clamp in uh, your wires sort of in something like that so that you're not, it can be really, really easy when you're holding these wires to think, I mustn't let them drop. So you're gripping them so, so tightly and forgetting to breathe as well, which isn't, which isn't good, but you'll be gripping them so tightly that they will bend and crush and come out of shape. And the whole point of, the, of doing this technique is you're wrapping around these base wires so it gives you a lovely, neat finish. So I'm gonna hold here and just, I'm looking at my tension here, so keeping wraps here, but I'm, I'm holding it, supporting it, but not squeezing too tightly. So I've got my two single wraps, then I'm going to come next onto and do a one single wrap around the two wires. Next one, I'm going to come down and so I'm at this point now, so single wraps around that base. Okay, we're now onto this next section. So one single wrap around two wires and back to the start. So now we do that, that funny loop. We're at this point now. So we come up over, just like we did on the fork and we come all the way around. Wrap around and back to the beginning. And then a single wrap, okay. And what can happen as well, if you squeeze too tightly, you'll close that gap. So just be mindful that, that is a, sort of just looking at your tension there. 
So then I'm going to do come into the next section. So I'm going to do three single wraps. So one, two, three. Okay. So we're at this point now. So we've done those. So we're on to our next single wrap over two wires. One. We're going to have three to space that out. So one, two, three. And now we're on to our next fancy loop one. So we start it off. We go once over the two base wires back to the start as if we almost looks like we're going to do that the same. But this time we use that third wire and we come up and over and round back to the start. One wrap over the two wires and three to space. So one, two, three. So if we look where we are, we've done two of those. So one, two, we're now on this section. So we've got three. So we're looking at the one single one and back down and then space that one, two, three. So see where we are here? So we're at that point. So again, so we've got one more fancy one. So going in one and our last loop. So remember we're coming down to the back and we just nip around the front there, that one, just one wrap there, back to the start and then one wrap around the two. And then this one, now if you look, so because we've come to the end of it here, what we're thinking about is we've had three single wraps separating all those sort of like the higher points up. So if we think about what we're going to do now, it's in a straight line. But what we're going to do is we're going to join it so it becomes a complete circle. So if you think about it, you're thinking about your two ends and where they meet. So if we look at here, what we've got, we know separating out all of those, uh, the different, uh, this design, this design here with the loop, we, remember we've done three wraps. So to join this bit and this bit, we don't want to have three here and three here because when we join it up, that will be six in between and it will throw off the design. So I've started with two here. So I only need one at the end of there because they will join up. So I can stop there. So I can snip that off and I can snip that off there. So I'm just lifting it up and I'm going to snip that off so I can move that out of the way. So we've got something that, that looks like that at the moment. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this top one. So I'm just going to remove that, give it a little wiggle. And I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. So sometimes it, you can be really enthusiastic and what you want to do is you just want to take out all those base wires. If your tension has been, uh, you've been quite tense and you've pulled really, really, really tightly, you might struggle to get those base wires out. So what you can do is if you are finding that, what you could do is you can snip it, but then you will You'll have, you'll have destroyed your base wires. So if say, uh, I'm really pulling on that wire and I just can't get that, that wire out. Very, very carefully, you would go in, snip that, that base wire, and then you can just remove it like that. But it's, it's, it's good practice if you can just get your work on your tension and then you don't destroy the base wires, but that's, that's the way, but you need to make sure that you're not snipping and cutting and ruining that, all that hard work that you've done. So if we go back to this one, so now, so I've taken off the first sort of that, that top that, or the third base wire. And it was that third one that we'd done all those little loops around. So if we turn to the side, hopefully you can see those loops there. Now, when we look at it from the, the front, we can't see those loops. It just looks like another, almost like a straight line, although we can see them slightly there, but we want to make that much more pronounced. So we're going to use our chain nose pliers. So I'm going to hold them. I'm holding and supporting um, the, the wire work that I've done. And I'm going to take my, um, take my pliers and I'm just going to turn that so that it faces the front. And you can see that much more clearly now. And let's go along. So I'm going to take, do the next one and twist and the next one twist 
So what that's done, and, and, it's, and it's quite important so that you, you keep the shape, is that you only take out that one, that, that top one that the loop has been formed around. Because if I took everything off, it's, the, the, you know, it's gonna, not gonna have any support there. So when I try and turn that wire that I've already work hardened by, by wrapping and weaving, it's likely that it's gonna, just, it's gonna make everything go out of shape. But the trade-off of that is, what that will have done is that's then now reduced that, the wire work. So it's, it, even if you've worked with your tension, by adding that twist, you've tightened the weave. So this second wire might be a little bit harder to get out, but you can see, so I'm just, I've got my pliers on there and I'm just gonna withdraw that. Okay, and you can start to see how that's looking now. And we'll go with that, that next one. So let's give that a wiggle as well. And bring that now if you are working with the stainless steel rods obviously don't go in with your flush cutters and try and um, uh, cut those because you will you'll wreck your flush cutters so you really must sort of go in and give that a wiggle to to remove it so we've now got something that looks like that so it's it's nice and uniform all the the loops are at the same height um, you know it's very neat because we've worked on those base wires so we know that they're all a uniform size and that really comes into its own when you're uh, making earrings so you know that or, or links where you need that that repetition so what we want to do with it now is we want to get it so that it looks something like that so at the moment we've got that that flat line and you see and so what I've done with mine is I've done it in the groups so that that small section there and followed the pattern and I've done it individually on the base wires. When you get really, really uh, speedy and you've done maybe lots of them, there's nothing to stop you from, as long as you count the, the wraps in between, so you're allowing, say, maybe for a couple of extra so that you can cut them down, you could carry on and do, uh, you know, uh, your two earrings at the same time and just one continuous weave. So I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna work with some, I've got some uh, 0.4 wire I'm probably going to take about, uh, maybe about, I've got about 10 centimetres. So what we're, what we're looking for here is we want to work with a fine enough wire that we can get through that core. So it's that section there, this bit here, it needs to go, maybe go through uh, once and in, in parts at least twice. Okay, so uh, you might struggle if you uh, tried to do this with uh, a 0.6 because we need to get, if we remember we've got, this is a one lot of 0.6, but the base wire that we went round is a one mil. So to get two lots of 0.6, we might struggle with that. So you can see, so I'll pop that on there. So now to get it so that it's gonna look like that, that neat circle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to here and I want to bring it round and I'm gonna, so hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm gonna take this, almost like use it like a needle and thread, and I'm gonna to look to pop, pop out somewhere within that pattern so that I can just still, so you can see, so it's gone through two and then it's popping out here. So if I just keep pushing it and you can use your pliers if you need to, let's bring that through, so that's gone through and I'm gonna bring that round, okay. So to make it look neater, it's looking, it's looking good so far, but what we actually want to do is we're gonna do the same on this side now. So I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna do the same there. I'm going through there and then come up here. Now by just going through here, we, we're going to get a neater, more, um, uh, it's gonna look just like it's, it's like a complete piece of wire work rather than having a big gap. So I'm just gonna pull that, get that nice and tight, and let's shape that a little bit. Now you would never know, because what we've done is we've counted the, the single wraps, the spaces in between. We've made sure that we've only got three here, just like we have in the others, and we've, when, we've, when we've joined it together, we go through a few extra. If we just bought it out here, there's chances are that you would see that, that join, but we're gonna pull here, nice tension, and that will hopefully mean that we don't see it. I'm also gonna take this one, the shorter side, and I'm just going to go, just so that I can lock it into place, pulling it nice and tightly, and now I'm gonna go, and it gets hidden in amongst the other wires there. 
So you can see I've just locked that into place and that is pretty secure now. And I can go in and just snip that off and just tuck that in. Okay. So what we've got now is, so I'm just gonna start now and go in and shape. What, you know, because we've, we've changed it from that, the flat, we've then, you know, made adjustments so that it's gone into the round. So chances are you'll then have to, to get it go, to go back to looking uh, neat and maybe flat and straight again. So I'm just gonna go in, go back in, I chain those pliers, or if you've got, you know, nylon jaw pliers, you can do that as well. And just looking to flatten that out so you can see the difference there. Okay, so I've now got that tail here. So if you need to and you're feeling like that, it's, it's looking a little bit uh, more oval egg shape than round, what you can do is you can go in, and I'm just gonna very, very carefully, if you've got a mandrel of some sort, these bell makers, just gonna go in and let's just make that a little bit more round. Okay, so we've now got a nice tail. I'm gonna keep that as the front, I think. That's gonna go across nicely there. Okay, so I'm now gonna take one of my jade iron. You've got a lovely drill hole in here, so that's, that's not gonna be a problem, and certainly not with the 0.4. I'm just gonna go in and just push that ever so slightly. You see, I've just used my nail just to dip that in there so it's not sitting, it's gonna sit really nicely, not too proud off the, off the setting. So now you're looking where it naturally falls. So you're looking at the opposite. So this one is actually coming in very nicely up in between where that loop is and that first one. So I'm gonna let it go, it's, that's where it's sitting naturally and I'm gonna bring that up through. So I've got, again, like the needle and thread, I'm gonna take it up to the back, come up through the back and we just wanna put a couple of wraps so it's coming back to the front. Let's feed that through. Hold it in place, bit of tension, pull that through, and I'm gonna do one more wrap. So that now is really, is tucked in and it's nice and secure. Then I'm gonna cut, just leave that, that 0.4 wire, I'm then gonna just snip that off, probably about a millimeter to spare, and then I'm gonna get my chainers plan. Just wanna tuck that in so that it's sitting in between the wire work and the bead so that that doesn't, I've got nothing catching there. And you can see now how that then, that, that round is a lovely setting, really intricate setting, but because we've done, we'd use those base wires. So when you put it next to that, that the other one that we've done, they're pretty much identical. So it works, as I say, works perfectly for earrings that whatever you do, you know, it's gonna look pretty much the same or if you've got those fancy links and they're, they're sitting next to each other, you know it's gonna look the same. So immediately, you know, your wire work just, you know, it looks lovely and neat. So now what we're looking at is we've got, I'm just gonna tidy this one up as well, actually, in, in my pliers there. So let's bring this in. And that's sitting there. So now what we've got, is we've, we're, we're looking at it and we've, we've made it so that we've got that decorative element around it. But by adding in those loops, yes, it's given us the nice decorative um, effect, but it's also given us, if we the same way we'd think about um, connectors, things like that, it's also given us three different hanging or connecting points. So if we look at that, that little loop there, we know we can get something in there and we can either, we could hang it so that it's sort of coming down here. But for our earrings, we're gonna have it almost like um, uh, a trapeze uh, going slightly, sort of going into slight angle there and it's gonna come into those two loops. So to do that, we're gonna make something that looks like this. Okay, so this can be, you, you can add into this, this could be uh, as long or as short as, as you want it to be, depending on how, um, you know, if you really, really like long dangly earrings, you might want to make the, in, increase the length of this and have it so it's much longer. If you're not too keen on dangly earrings, um, maybe you'll want to make it shorter. 
So what we need for this, we want to go back to, uh, we, we've worked with a 0.4 wire and we've worked with a 0.6. So for this one, we want it, we need a bit more structure to this. So I would say at a minimum, go with a 0.8 or um, a one mil. So what we're going to do is we're going to take probably, if you want it to be about the same sort of um, size as that, this one here. So it's a, you know, it's a good size um, uh, drop on there. We're going to probably go with about eight centimeters or so uh, of wire. So I'm just going to get a gauge for that. So I think probably let's go with about something like that. I'm going to snip that off. Okay. So what I'm going to work with now, I need to, I need a few more loops in this. So if we look at this and there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So on this one, I've got a straightforward loop and it, the wires don't cross over and, and I'll show you uh, both ways. So if I actually cut another bit of wire and then we can do one straight after the other. So if I just get, so like with all wire work, while it's on the reel and I've got the weight of it there, I'm just going to run it through my fingers. Like I say, if you've got nylon jaw pliers, brilliant. You can just, uh, you know, get any kinks out now while well, you've got the, the weight of the reel and the rest of the wire on there. So we'll take a couple of bits there. So the first, so I'm going to find sort of like my midpoint and I'm going to hold my round nose pliers and I'm just going to go and bring it round. So I need to just snip this off so it's a little bit even. So let's bring that in. So while it's like this, correct it now because you know then it's going to be even. So I'm just going in and I snip off there. I'm going to put my pliers back in. Now, if I want it to cross over, I can just simply hold here and cross over like that, if that's how you want it. Or if you want to have it so that it's, um, we've got sort of, so we haven't got a crossover, but we've got a nice tight loop there. So again, so I'm going to find hopefully about the midpoint. We'll find out in a minute. Yeah, not bad, but I still need to go in and just give that a bit of a... So let's bring this in, snip that down so you see that, ed that end a little bit longer. Okay, so I've got my pliers here. Now, this isn't probably the most natural way for you, you to do this, but I, hopefully I, I want you to be able to see it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold these in here. I've got my chain nose pliers. And I'm just going to pinch a little bit. I don't know if you can hopefully see that, I'm just pinching that together. Okay, that's that's done a couple of things. It's formed the shape. It's given me a nice angle here, and it's work hardened that that wire. So now, when I open this out, so let's just flatten it. Although it's twisted there, what we're going to do? We're going to just flatten that out there, and that's given me a nice loop. I can then open that sort of, a, you know, and have that at any, any point down here. So I'm then going to hold here. You can hammer that if you want to. Or I'm just going to bring that, bring that in. So what I want to do now, I need, I need to make two loops that will connect into these loops here. So I'm going to work quite closely into my, uh, quite near the tip of my round nose pliers. I'm going to start and turn in. So you can see that, you can see how that loop is sort of going uh, and it's sort of sitting at the back. So I'm just going to correct that so it sits in line with the rest of the wire. So I'm sort of moving my pliers around and giving it a kick, a slight kick out so that it just, that, that loop continues and flows. And I'll show you, uh, so I'll do it the other side and we'll leave it as it is and then you'll see the difference. So I'm going to turn over about the same sort of size and bring that. So if you have a look now, this is only a slight, that slight angle just makes the difference in how it's going to sit. So this one is, it flows and it's in line with the, this, the long wire. This one sort of sits at the back. So remember we pop it back in and it's a slight, just a slight tilt and angle so that it comes in line. We can go back in and close that up. So we have a look now. So you can see, so we've made a loop here. It's nice and, um, secure here. We've work hardened it there. If you need to, you could go in and hammer. This is pretty, um, we, you know, don't forget it's going to have a, a component in between it, so it's not going to squash as much there as well. So now this part, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open, let's move some of these out of the way. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open this one as well. 
So I've opened both of those. Now this bit, you, one usually goes in absolutely no problem at all. And I'm going to close that up. The second one can be a little bit fiddlier. So let's see how it goes. So I'm going to bring that in and give that a wiggle in there. And if you find that it's a little bit tight, let's go in and I'm just going to just open up that loop just a little bit more. So to do that, I'm holding and supporting it and giving it a wiggle in there with my round nose pliers just to enlarge it slightly. And let's get the angle in there, see if it'll go in. If it doesn't, what we'll do is we'll just open it up ever so slightly so that we're trying to get the angle so that it goes into there. And we can correct that afterwards. So remember we'd opened it up, so what we need to do is we need to then sort of get that nice circle back, that nice loop. So again, so I'm gonna bring that round. And let's bring that in. And we can see that that now has given us that sort of trapeze that it's gonna sit on. You could also, if you wanted to, because you've got enough of the, um, of the jadeite, if you wanted to make a slight variation on it, so you could have it so it's sort of sitting. So I'm gonna pop the two on there and we'll do the same. We'll, we'll go in and make our loop, loop there. And again, we'll do this side. So loop on that side, little kick out. And then you can see that would go something like that. So you can either leave it, leave it as it is, or you can then go in again, because like I say, you've got several jade to work with. So if I just take one of these, I'm just gonna snip that off. No, I'll just cut this and then we can work with one of these. So I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna work with my ball head pin let that fall down okay so that's gone all the way so now what we're going to do is i'm going to just do a loop and i don't have to I can, if i wanted to add a jump ring in but i can now because i've got a closed loop here so i'm going to turn that and come out bring round so we're going back to the front i'll give that again a little wiggle on there and let's bring this in. So we're gonna slide that through, closed loop there, and it's about to be a closed loop. So let's bring that in. Let gravity help you, let that keep, keep all of that earring out of the way. Then I'm gonna go and bring this round. So now, just to add a little bit more detail as well. So I'm going all the way down to the bead, and I'm gonna make a sort of a bit of a bead cap. So I'm bringing this round so that it comes all the way around on top of the bead and because we've got a, we have got a back and a front to the earrings what I don't want to do is I don't want to cut that if I've come if I've extended that wrap loop down I don't really want to then cut it off at the front so I'm looking at what how it hangs I'm going to turn that round and I can either just nip it in so that that, that finishes at the back but that is actually that's work hardened quite a bit so once it's at the back I'm just going to go in my flesh cutters snip off and let's let's just bring that in okay there we are so now you've got so the variations let's pop them all there so you can see we've got that long trapeze ah oh, thank you thank you angela Angela says, hi, beautiful jewellery. What are the stones, please? Well, the stones are really, really, really special stones. Uh, black and white jadeite that you've got in your, um, your day one, the box one of the advent calendar, which I think is actually on the screen now. So you can see how, um, yeah, if you want to have a go with making these, yeah. And, and I also know I've, I've worked with six other things um, in the calendar and each of them are all really, really different. Um, and, and loads and loads of different techniques and I can see what the other designers have made and it is it's just uh, it's 
uh, looks brilliant. I mean, so if you are looking for, I would say, tasters of, of creativity with that quality, that's that's what, and, the, and the element of surprise, like you would get in advent calendars. It's you know, it's absolutely that is the thing to have. Lovely Christmas present for um, for yourself. Ah, so I'm hearing actually. So to give you an idea, the, the, the strand that I'm working with now um, is, is actually worth £50. So that, that sort of gives you an idea for the, the value of the, the calendar as a whole because you're getting 24 different items. And like I say, can all completely different. So the six that I had, totally different. And each of them really, really lovely. So, um, and, and I think that's, that's the other thing, isn't it? That it's your, what you're getting in those, those lovely drawers, uh, but, it's the, it's the, the hour-long tuition that you're getting afterwards. And, it, um, you know, we're looking at one project here uh, or, or one pe a project that, you, you know, is specifically one piece of jewellery. But actually, when you look at it, if we look at uh, the pieces that we're, we're making here, if I bring these in, so I've shown you the technique, but if you start to, you take that technique and you, you do it over and over again, there's nothing to stop you, you know, that then becomes a necklace. Uh, you group them together, uh, joining up in, in, you know, in different ways that might become a brooch for you, uh, you know, uh, bracelets. So it, it's sort of giving you that, um, yes, a little bit of inspiration, but and maybe a bit of hand holding if maybe you haven't done any wire work before. Uh, but then you, you take what's in the advent calendar and absolutely, you know, you make it your own. And what I'd say is have a, have a think about the techniques that we've looked at. So going back to the fork, so if we, 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 know, we, we looked at how that worked with the fork, if you, if you give that a wiggle and take that off, you know, on that larger scale, there's nothing to stop you going in and making, uh, making your own stars, Christmas decorations, because you're doing that same technique, but it's going back over, um, working with different wires, different gauges, different thicknesses, uh, different colors. Uh, and you can then decide, um, you know, how it works. So we've looked at different techniques there. Um, I hope that's been clear and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing your, your makes on the Wall of Fame and enjoy your advent calendar. So yeah, so Merry Christmas, everybody. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Jewelry Maker app. Head over to your app store now and search Jewelry Maker and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favorite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured on today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's best sellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click on the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching On The Go with Jewelry Maker. Buying with Jewelry Maker couldn't be easier. Here's a quick overview of how to get involved. When you see a product you like and you want to purchase, you will see the graphics appear on the screen. You'll see the item code and a starting price. As time goes on, you'll see the price drop. And as viewers call in,